together, I'm still looking for the final coordination line, the line of departure, the phases of the offense, and all that other shit. It ain't there. You see, the problem is, what we got to do is look at reality, distill it down to a theory about war, and then learn how to apply it. You know, in here is going to be the doctrine and all the stuff we're trying to write. Here's the training and the application. You know, now I'm in here, which is great. This is easy, guys. Being back here is easy. Down here, it's hard. You know, I was one of these guys who taught here and at Command and Staff College. I got 10 and a half years at Quantico being part of the problem. And we put out shit that doesn't work down here. You know, it doesn't work. You want to hear the shit that my lieutenants tell me. I'm out there and I'm watching them do stuff. I said, what the hell are you doing, Lieutenant? Sir, this is the Australian Peel that I was part of doing. <laughs> the Australian Peel? That sounds like some sort of strip show with him, you know? You no, know, no, my guy told me, see, you get so focused in on this little shit. We can't even give, I want to back up the first sergeant here. We can't give a challenge and password anymore. We had a good system for a challenge and password. Halt, who goes there? Sergeant Tinney with a friendly patrol. Advance and be recognized. You are Sergeant Tinney or you're not. You know, Boston. Hey, pass, you know. It was simple. Now, they're all James Bond. You know? <laughs> the moon is blue, you know. <laughs> How are you? They're giving a shout out. I don't know if they it's all another horse. You know, we've even fucked up the techniques now. You know, we couldn't get the theory right. Even the techniques are screwed up. And this is what my guys get here to come out here trying to deal with. That's why we have battlefield skills in Wesley Knight. You've got to wash everything they learned at the Chronicle out before you can start on this stuff. <laughs> you know, I read something pretty interesting, and I think it was Montgomery, it was either Montgomery or General Hackett that said, the common phrase heard amongst officers after World War I in the British Army was, thank God the war's over, we can get back to real soldiers. Now that reminded me of the Marine Corps. Thank God the war is over, we can get back to real soldiers, the way we do it at Monaco, you know. It's not reality, it doesn't reflect reality. I, I drew up a little chart here of the difference between what I saw in practice and what I learned and what I think reality is. This place taught me, and all the exercise I was ever on, that the battlefield is linear. We have lines all over the place. In practice, I would believe, if I were that margin, that war is linear. You know, we have coordinated fire lines, fire support coordination lines, you know. We have boundaries that are lines. Mike Bobby says we're in boxes all the time. That's right. You know, and, and we would believe that. My humble experience in Vietnam, it's a non-linear battlefield. The VC did everything in depth. If you had to characterize the VC by a formation, you'd probably get guys that always say, we're always getting caught in horseshoe ambushes. See, they, they looked at things in some kind of depth to deliver fire from two sides. And then the little bastards would connect these suckers like this. You'd run into a bunker complex on the reverse slope in the middle of the jungle that was a series of these kinds of things. So when you went to hit it, you got nailed. You went to envelop it, like they taught me in the basic school, you got trick screwed again. You know, you went to do a masterful turning move and it come in, the bastard got you again. I mean, you couldn't get, a, get this little guy. You couldn't get your hands around him. He didn't offer me all that flank shit and everything else, and I couldn't take him on front of it. This guy had depth. He had too many sides. He had too many facets to his formation. We were slick. We're in boxes and lines all the time. That doesn't work. This works. I was always taught frontal and flanking, basically. You take them on head on, or conveniently, he'll have an unanchored flank that just dangles off the side of the hill. I got to be queen for a day a second time. I got to envelop at range five. The thing that scared the shit out of me is the hill was huge, and in those days, when men were men, we threw a Willie Peter grenade as a signal to, to cease or shift the base of fire. None of this smoke shit. And I got out with that Willie Peter grenade, and I looked up that hill. <laughs> the rest of the guys in my squad were like this. And the guy, Major Skipper, who was the, uh, the uh, guy who ran squad tactics here, said, Big guy from the south, you know, one of those guys choose 87 and gloves at the back there. He said, Zinni, you an Alice arm? <laughs> this would be the greatest throw of my life, man. To haul that sucker up there. But the envelopment was the same. I mean, conveniently, all the, all the targets were facing that way once the top of the hill. I said, this is great. You know, all the enemy will give us a front. They don't. Infiltration and penetration is the way you gotta go. We, we beat that to death. I know we've talked about that a lot. In practice, we seize terrain. 
We do what I call process terrain. We process ridge lines. We process high ground. We go from one piece of high ground to another piece. I was an instructor command staff college. We gave graded requirements there. Some of you were students at that time. Now you run the institution, Dave Better and everybody else. But we would say, give us a concept, you know, along with the overlay and everything else. I'd get these things back, they were great. The symbology was perfect. Everything was indented correctly. All the words were there. But it didn't say anything. They processed terrain. Objective one, objective two, objective out, objective bravo. Intermediate objective, because it's a little smaller piece of high ground, there's a bump between this ridge line and that ridge line. So it is a goddamn intermediate objective, you know? We process this terrain all the time. We over-focus on terrain all the time. As I said today, in the 9th Marine Regiment two years, I never ever designated a terrain objective. There was nothing that ever had RLT objective one or objective out one, never. I never ever designated terrain objective. It misfocuses, it's needless, you don't need it. Terrain's overrated. When I say key terrain, first thing that comes to your mind is high ground. I contend high ground's not key terrain. Low ground's key terrain. The only time you occupy high ground is to control low ground. Really the low ground, the avenues of approach, the kinds of places you move through are what's important. Everything else really gears you to that. You know, it's what gives you the, the freedom to move, and usually it's down there. Some interesting thoughts. I got a class on terrain and everything else and on movement. Interesting to study the VC and how they move and why we couldn't find it. Because I read a few books written by some people, and I talked to some VC NBA prisoners when I was a stupid ass lieutenant captain to figure out why can't we ever find you little suckers? And he told me why, a couple of them. You know, as to the way they move. Ingenious, not the way we think about moving. I think really, instead of seizing terrain, you gotta look at how that enemy's deployed, where he is, where the force is, how he's disposed. And you gotta develop that disposition. That is gonna be what you're gonna do to unravel him rather than seize terrain. I was taught about deliberate attacks. I just described one. You know, the line of departure, the final coordination line, everything else. It's a series of meeting engagements most of the times out there. The guy never conveniently pops himself on top of the hill with one pine tree waiting for me to attack him. He, he just bumps into me and hits me when I'm not expecting him from the wrong direction. All the time he does that to me. He doesn't cooperate. He isn't part of school's demonstration troops like I learned when I was a lieutenant. SDT used to be the forerunner of the old EI company or support command, whatever the hell you call it now. Those guys played the game right. Bad guys don't. I learned about a deliberate defense. Once you stop, you changed everything. On the, on the military crest of a hill, you set in a defense. If you were in a zone, forget that. Now you're in a sector of the defense. You're not in a zone of attack anymore just because you stopped. You know, now we have FPLs, PDFs, you know, final protective fires. We're going to put out tactical supplementary protective wire. We're going to do all this shit, do all that. You know, we're going to put this tremendous defense in. The Maginot Line's going in overnight. <laughs> Never, ever in my life did I do that. I have always in my life put in a hasty defense. I stopped for a short period of time and had to get a hasty defense. I didn't change the names of things. I didn't have time to go through this tremendous preparation. You know, it just wasn't there. I'll tell you what, I used to look and sit on the front end of this thing and say, why am I here instead of there? Before somebody, and I read Mike Wiley's article in the Gazette on the reverse slope defense and found out I'd be smarter if I was back there instead of up front here. You know, and that's where we're gonna have to look at putting in these defenses. This is planning oriented. This is execution oriented. The way we talk about and practice it is process oriented. The process is the end unto itself. We beat that to the death. This one's personality oriented. I saw in, in uh, infantry and battle a great line that led off one of their chapters. That to win what you need is elastic tactics, swift maneuver, quick decisions. I said that captured it. Because what's the opposite of that is what we've been doing. Rigid procedures, methodical fighting or methodical battle, as Bill calls it, and a slow process to get you there. You know, elastic tactics means to me you're not hung up on dogma. You know what dogma is? Dogma is what happened to me when I was a three of a battalion in Europe. I was with uh, the 3-2, and we were on Boulevard, Northern Wedding, whatever. And we had the entire, this entire German armored brigade as the aggressors. We were in reserve, our battalion, and one of the battalions on the line had had it after about eight days of shit. We thought, you know, we were done for the exercise. We got told to get our ass up and relieve them in the lines. My battalion commander and I zip up. The only guys we could move were two companies. One was mecked up, five tanks, ten tracks. The other we had to throw on trucks. We had a platoon of toes. We ran up. Got in place. 
and it'll send some scouts out right away. I got two companies. One is in a little mech team moving into an area. The other is the trucks were waiting for the rest of the battalion. Scouts came back saying, God damn it, there is every German tank in the world about five clicks away in this big clearing. They were in assembly area, ready to attack this whole German brigade. And then Lieutenant Colonel Gardner looked at me and says, what do you think we ought to do? I says, we got to attack. He says, right, you know. I said, sir, we've got to attack. He says, okay. He says, it sounds good. You know, that's, we have no choice. So I said, here's what we'll do. We'll run down with the mech team on one side, hit them, draw their attention to that end, and on the other side, about two clicks, two and a half clicks away, was a low, long rise. I said, we'll move the truck infantry behind that rise with the toes. We'll bring the toes up. As they turn to face the armor unit, the toes at their max range will begin to fire and then a back end all that German army. Great! A little toe platoon commander came up and he says, Sir, toes are not an offensive weapon. Now, I gotta tell you, we cannot attack. <laughs> well, you be shit me. I mean, I can imagine, I can imagine Rommel's air defense officer, the 88s, cannot be used in an anti arm <laughs> I mean, you gotta be shit me. But you see, that's not, that's the rigid procedure. I enjoy this debate over LAI battalion. They don't do windows. You know? <laughs> you know, we're a maneuver element, you know? We only go together as one package. Screw you, Jack. You may be back there in rear area security. I love reading Battle of Iwo Jima. Reconnaissance Battalion had rear area security. Killed 512 Japanese in one week back there. Why was recon in rear area security? What the hell else are you going to do with it? Put a recon team out, you know, two meters in front of your <laughs> I mean, that's elastic tactics, that's the way of thinking. You do what you have to do with what you got, you know? And you're not bound up by some goddamn dogma on organization or mission or the way you have to do things. You can't be that way.